Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Contineros podcast. The podcast is sponsored by Port Pro, the leading operating system for drayage carriers. Schedule a demo today at portpro.io, and don't forget to mention Contineros for 10% off. In the studio today, I got Guillermo Ochoa. He is a dispatcher out of the LA and LB ports. Most people call him Memo. What's up? What's going on, man? How you doing? I'm good. I'm here a little early per, <laughs> per the guest request. <laughs> Happy Sunday, bro. Happy Sunday, my brother. Let's get right into it. How, how long have you been dispatching for? Uh, I started dispatching when I was uh, 20 going on 21. Uh, I first started um, learning dispatch um, at that age. And then I took on the uh, gauntlet of uh, dispatching 53 footers. So while I was learning uh, port dispatching, I was learning, you know, OTR dispatching as well. So I was doing that. Uh, but now I just stick to strictly, you know, drayage, uh, port dispatching. Occasionally, sometimes I will go back and, mm -hmm. hey, let me see what kind of loads are going good for the 53 footers, mm -hmm. you know. But... I've been doing it for almost five, yeah, almost five years. I'm about to be 25 in April, so almost five years. And just to clarify, you're not a dispatching service, right? You you dispatch at a company, yeah, the drivers that already company. work with them, right? Like, yes, sir. Because mm -hmm. some people couldn't get that confused easily, right? Yeah, yeah, and then also, like, there are companies that they're just strictly dispatch service. Mm -hmm. But, no, I work for a company, you know, I'm a dispatcher for that company, Um but no, like I don't provide any dispatch service. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That, you know, I work for the company. Your so, boss yeah. looking at the at the at the recording, like, what do you mean you don't do? You don't. Do <laughs> Only there. My boss is like, what are you talking about, bro? Yeah. What's come the, see me in my office. <laughs> what's the biggest difference between uh, over the road dispatching and and the drayage? So uh, over the road dispatching, you kind of have to negotiate more with the broker or whoever mm -hmm. is that's dispatching that load. Mm -hmm. Let's say uh, you also have to learn, like, the market of where loads are going to per state. Like, um, the majority right now of loads that I'm looking at are loads going to Texas, Loretto, Houston, Dallas, you know, um, El Paso. So you kind of have to see, like, how much is the average um, rate, you know, like, especially if you're going down deep into uh, Texas, you're looking at more at the 38 to 42 you know, 100, if you're going to be close to El Paso or anything from, you know, that's closer to New Mexico, it's, it tends to be like in the three range, 32. So you do have to learn um, if you're going to be paying the driver per mile or just by a flat rate, you know, and also is there a carryover like, hey, like I'm here in Cali on Saturday. I can't like I have to wait, you know, Saturday, Sunday until Monday for them to to unload me. So you actually have to pay for those layovers, you know what I mean? Because, hey, the guy is holding the load for you until Monday when he gets unloaded. Mm -hmm. So you need to learn that. And then port drayage dispatching is just, hey, you know what? Um, there's there's XYZ container at such and such port. Make an appointment for it. See when's the LFD, um, you know, to pull it out. When's the last three days to put it back into the port so you don't go into, you know, per diem and, and demerge and all those types of, you know, wonderful slangs you know mm -hmm. what i mean so that's all you got to worry about with port dispatching and then with over the road dispatching you know like over the road the layover what are the tricks to that because some people cut it off after a certain amount of hours of the wait time and they mm -hmm. say we're just going to consider it a layover and it comes out cheaper for the company to have that driver there versus if it was an hourly wait mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah yeah. Does that change but from company to company? Like, it does change from company to company. Like, the company where I was learning, um, they were like, hey, you know what? Like, the first day is free. The second one will be, like, 150 bucks, And then the, that's all they will pay because it would just be, let's say, Saturday. So the Saturday day is free, and then they'll pay for Sunday, and then Monday is when it's it's being delivered. So some drivers will take it. I was just like, nah, you know what? Like, I need a little bit more because, you know, I'm storing it in my yard. Or, you know, hey, you know what, like, like I'm not going to accept that rate or something, you know, or like, hey, I'll hold the, the load until you pay me what I want. Or, you know, it's mm. just, it's, it's a lot of, um, like, I don't want to say politics, but it's, it's, it's just within each company, you know, like, how are they going to pay the layover? Yeah. You know what I mean? And one thing you brought up, the, the cost per mile mm -hmm. or flat rate. Yeah. Is it, is it shady or is it doable? Mm-hmm. That if you book it at a flat rate, but you mm -hmm. could offer it at a per mile 
basis. Is um, that is that a thing or you can't? That is a thing. Actually. Oh yeah, there are companies that they get paid, let's say, six grand for a logo in Houston, but they'll charge it like a dollar seventy five per mile, and they'll end up coming to like less than three grand or like right at the three grand mark or something. And instead, it's like, hey, you know what? I'm getting paid six G's for it. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna offer it for thirty two, or I'm gonna offer it for thirty four. You know, and it's like that's you know that's what they'll do. But then like they'll also make the calculations. How many miles is it from let's say from Fontana to go to Houston, Texas, or something? Mm-hmm. And and if it's cheaper on the on the mile rate, they'll offer the mile rate first, and then they'll go with negotiations. But that's usually like how the majority of the companies will do it. They'll charge like one fifty, one seventy five per mile or something. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, a lot of guys, you think, when you were dealing with them, a lot of guys, do they know their numbers, or you kind of... Yeah, a lot of these oh, yeah. OTR drivers know their numbers. Like my dad, he has a set rate. Hey, I'm not I'm not going to Texas for less than 36. A lot of these drivers are like that. Okay. okay. So um, when I was learning and I started offering loads to go to Texas, I was like, oh, yeah, I got a, an El Paso load for 24. The guy just straight laughed at me. They're like, ha, ha, yeah, no, don't BS me. I'm yeah. like... No, seriously, that's what I got. He's like, nah, okay. Tell me when you have a better rate. He just hung up on me. Yeah. So I'm like, a lot of these guys know their numbers. So if you BS them, they're going to, they, you know, they know. Yeah. So BS you back. Yeah. And it's like, okay, you know what? The most I can give you for El Paso will be three or 31. They'll be like, you know, give me 33 and I'll move it for you. Now you're in a predicament. It's like, let's say if the customer needs it by next week and you have no other driver and you need to get it out. It's like, that's where the negotiations come in. It's like, if you miss it, the customer is going to pretty much like, hey, like, where's my, where's my shipment? Where's my, you know, where's my load? Oh, I couldn't get it because, you know, someone didn't want to move it. That's not an excuse. Like, you need to dispatch it, you know? So it's, again, I don't want to say politics, but it's like, you kind of have to put yourself out there like, hey, you know what? I need this load out. It needs to be in Texas by... Let's say, like, if you're dispatching on Monday, it has to be in Texas no later than Thursday. It's like you kind of have to, the, you know, your your pants, you know, the eight, like, mm-hmm. boss, I need to get this out. They don't want to take uh, three grand. They want 33. Okay, meet them halfway. I'll give you 32.50 or something. Mm. All right, cool. And then they'll take it, you know? So, kind of have to. You yeah, know. you might lose on one, but you yeah. secure the bag for the future. Yeah, because then it's yeah. like, okay. Now the customer will be like, you know what, this 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 company or this carrier, hey, you know what, like they got my load out in time, I need to use them more often, you know. So that's something that the company would rather pay the driver at least somewhat close to what they want than to lose a customer, because mm-hmm. sometimes that customer will provide them, let's say, forty loads in a month, and those forty loads are probably six grand each. Let's say mm-hmm. six grand times forty. I don't do math, but I think that's 240 grand, right? Imagine a company losing 240 grand for one customer. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I, yeah, I agree. <laughs> like, yeah, man, I'm just I would agree with, with you, but if you're wrong, then you're wrong. I, I would just, nah, I was misled. <laughs> nah, nah, I'm joking. See, I got him. <laughs> nah, 40, yeah, but you I get what I mean? The it's like, calculator. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wanted to throw you off a little bit. Nah, yeah. no, but, but I'm joking. But like, like if you think about it, like per month, let's say if a, if a company does do like, let's say 40, 50, three footers in a month, mm-hmm. and they lose that account, oh my God. It's like, no, they're losing a whole bunch of money. End Just of because you didn't want to dispatch a freaking load. End of the world. <laughs> Yeah, but you know what I mean? But that's pretty much how it is. There's a lot more, uh, you know, negotiating with, with over the road. You know what I mean? How did you end up doing this, the um, dispatching out of the ports or in general? In general? Uh, I want to say a lot of the stuff I'm doing now, my dad inspired me. You know what I mean? Like, he told me since I graduated high school, like, hey, you know, why don't you get into dispatching? And at first, like, yeah, you know. I look into it, but me being young and dumb, it's like, I, no, like I want to go to college. I want to you know, do this. I want to kind of live my life a little bit. But then, like, um, I actually started working in the trucking industry first um, with my uncle at, at his company. And I was just doing paperwork, but that's when I started seeing what a manifest was, seeing what a hand ticket was. So, like, around, I think I started with him at 18 or 19 years old. And... 
that's when I actually fully got into the business when it comes to, you know, documenting, um, you know, talking with drivers now, you know what I mean? Um, I think I lasted like one month because I kept screwing around. <laughs> so I lasted one month. He ended up firing me. You what was know? the last thing you did that got you fired? <laughs> Theo, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. I have to tell you. Um, <laughs> so my coworker, I'm not going to say her name, but like my ex coworker, she told me, hey, you know, like you should look up uh, some websites that can help you to type quicker. Because during the time, I actually typed really slow. And when it came to paperwork and all that stuff, data entry, you need to be a little bit quick on, on the typewriting. And mm. I was pretty slow, like a lot slower than the average. Mm -hmm. So I look up this website for typewriting, and it's a website full of typewriting games. <laughs> so, oh, so what's wrong with that? So the the co the um, the co-founder and the vice president's office are right next to where our department is right mm -hmm. and then um it's my uncle's office like you know all the way to the back mm -hmm. my uncle left and the co-founder and, and the vice president are in this room where my desk is like they can see me so they see me <laughs> over typing the goat is there's nothing and it's oh. like a super mario game Oh. And you have to type, and, and he's jumping while you're yeah. typing. So I'm just like, I'm like, okay. Yeah. And I was done with my job, you know? Like, I was like, okay, like, like I finished my filing. I finished my stamps. I finished signing everything off. You know, everything's good for payroll. Let me practice. Yeah. Later that night, my uncle calls me. Dude, what are you doing at work? I was like, what do you mean? Like, I genuinely, like, didn't know as to what was going on. He was like, <laughs> tell me why... You know, such and such is calling me that they find you playing Super Mario Brothers on the computer. From a distance. Yeah. And then it's like, for me to explain to him, it sounds dumb. Yeah. And then in the end, I was like, I get it. Like, you're upset. I'm, I'm sorry. You know, and mm. next day he ended up telling me, hey, don't come in anymore. I was like, I get it. It's cool. Mm. There was no bad blood. It's like, I don't want to ruin his reputation with that company because he's a, he's a director of ops. Mm. So it's okay. like, for someone to come to him to tell him how to run his department. Like, no, dude, like, you're not going to make me look stupid. I yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I was like, no, hold on, I'm sorry. You know, and then he made it clear too, hey, you work for this company. You're not my nephew. I'm not your uncle in this company. Yeah. And I said, it's fine because I understand. You know, family stuff is outside of work. And then if you're at work, it's because you're at work. So mm -hmm. I didn't have any bad blood or, you know, Outside doing family functions, I, uh, I said, hey, how you doing? Hey, what's going on? You know, it's good. You still go to the carne asada? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I love going to, you know, carne asada with my uncle. You know what I mean? You know, he's a cool dude, you know. And I love him for that because it's like, he taught me like, hey, you know what? Like, y you need to be serious with this business. It's like, you don't take it serious. This is going to happen. Mm -hmm. They're going to they're gonna fire you. Mm -hmm. So the the consejos that, that my uncle and my dad have both given me, it's like, it's worked up till now that I've been doing this for almost five years. It's like, you know, so I'm grateful for my uncle because he was hard on me too. And then I'm grateful for my dad because he was hard on me because like my uncle told my dad, like, hey, like, you need to talk to him. <laughs> my dad chewed me out. <laughs> At least that's better than what I thought happened. May maybe some weird uh, website with some typewriter <laughs> and, the, and the scene, a typewriting scene and then something no, else. So. typewriter? Uh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Cool. Nah, man, but yeah, like I was doing that. Uh, he, he let me go. Um, I went to fired. Yeah, as soon as he let me go, I went to go to work at an agency where I started unloading containers. I was doing that for like maybe six to nine months. I was unloading containers, and in the end, I was like, you know what? <coughs> Salud, amor y paz. Anyways, no COVID. <laughs> no COVID. <laughs> no, yeah, but like, you know, I I did that for some time too unloading containers and in the end i was like you know what like i i can't do this that you shit know? is hard yeah like my, my i did back, it like six months yeah but i i think like around six months yeah the nostrils you go home you wipe your nose oh yeah it's all it's black a, it's all black yeah Why? like all that well it's because the tiny the, particles the of tiny particles and on top of that the inside of a container is dirty because you know how like the floor is wood so, mm -hmm. like, whenever the, the forklift drivers are coming in, they're dropping pallets, the mm -hmm. dust is, is coming up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, it's like, if you're in there, you're, you know, some of these loads are floor loaded. So, you're in there and, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, all the particles are coming in your nose. 
this all proved that I did do that job. There's a little bit of everything at those places, right? So yeah. There's the there's the player that going around and you know flirting with all the girls. <laughs> there's that uh-huh. the ones that everyone knows that they they're fucking. <laughs> but and, and the lady's married though and they, they you know what i mean there's the, there's always like those people in every company <laughs> there's the, the the forklift driver that thinks he's your boss and fucking uh-huh. over possessive of the forklift he can't touch his shit yeah thinks you're gonna take his spot yeah and then there's the guy that competes with you for no reason starts unloading faster like what the fuck yes yeah, i know? do like we're <laughs> yeah, it's like what the heck man yeah. there's the crews that play uh soccer when they i'm like Motherfuckers, I'm yeah. tired. You guys are gonna go play soccer during your break. Yeah. So they, they got a lot of energy. So Yeah. Oh, the loncheras. Did you ever get to see loncheras go at it? He, oh, go at it? No. Because they're like one pulls up, you know, you know, like if another one gets there and the uh. other one's there, it's kinda awkward, you know? Well, it's yeah, like it's, it's like, like they're like, testing hey, out like, the turf, like but yeah. the other one's already been there, you know? Yeah. I haven't experienced that before, but mm-hmm. like it, it does, it's like it's kinda shady, you know, but but I've never experienced that before. Mm-hmm. I have experienced loncheras that they serve amazing food, especially like like finishing like a nine to ten hour shift just unloading forty footers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, Oh, you know what? Like um like a home cooked plate. Yeah, like a home cooked plate. Uh some of them with so champurrado, like okay. early in the morning. Yeah. So some of us will like like our clocking was I say is it's five in the morning. Some people will pull up at four because she would come through. She had champurrado, she have panes, she have breakfast sandwiches, burritos. Yeah, you know, and it was like you know, but that's food no. coma stuff. Food coma. Early, yeah, yeah, and I'm just like we're about to burn like six thousand calories right now just unloading containers. What are you? Yeah. <laughs> you're you're re-upping or what? You know, Shit. but you know, but yeah, man, like you know. Shout out to them though. They work hard, and that's a, oh, yeah. that's not a job anyone can do. And it's mm-hmm. someone's got to do it, you know. Yeah, someone's got to do it. That's that's with every job. Yeah, you, you know, someone's got to do it. But yeah, man. If y'all want to drive too. reckless, or y'all want to get a DUI, that's the job for you. <laughs> It'll be available. You know? <laughs> they make you take yeah, your, your CDL. Um, what do you call it? You'll be counting your blessings like you don't know what you have till you lose it you know exactly so you're like oh man I, I i had a pretty good job and i fucked up right so at the time it's because i was driving reckless but anyways yeah. let's not make this about me <laughs> yeah no just but, a little um, psa a little PSA. but but that would just say you know like, like you don't know what you have until you lose it so like that's what i know to say you know i i need to get back in the office because like I, I can't do this for like 40 years until I, like i decide to retire I can't do this, you know. You can't be fucking around though. No, no fucking games. No yeah, Super yeah. Mario, bro. And that's the thing. Like that, that actually traumatized me because like when I went back into the office, I'm like, I can't, I can't mess this up again. You know yeah. What I mean? So, <laughs> I got out of the office. I mean, I got out of is unloading, and then I went to to this other trucking company that they were looking for someone in paperwork, and I told them I had experience in paperwork. Not experience in you know typewriting, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they needed somebody from paperwork badly, so they hired me. All right, cool. So that's when it was already with port drage. And I was like, okay, no more OTR, port drage. So I'm like, huh, the manifest is different. I'm like, well, okay, this has letters and a whole lot of numbers. So this isn't this isn't 53 footers. And I'm like, there's 20 footers. <laughs> I was just like, what the? Okay. I'm like 45. So I'm like. What's BNSF? <laughs> you yeah. know? And they're like, I thought you said that you had experience. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. Just, just you know, it's been a while. And like, oh, okay. <laughs> just like, it's been a know. while, but you forgot there were 20 footers. Yeah. That. I'm just like, okay. And then I'm over here pretending to know what I'm doing, you know? And I'm just like, all right, cool. And like, all right, this is a hand ticket. This is an interchange ticket. This is their manifest. Okay. So with every interchange ticket goes with this hand ticket because this is where he's saying he pulled it out and this is where he's going. All right, cool. Scan. Cool. I was doing that for like four months and then another company called me over to come dispatch for them. They're like, hey, we heard that you have dispatch experience. <clears throat> they didn't ask what type of experience because I didn't tell them either. They're like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you know, OTR. No. Nah. They're like, yeah, like, like we need you, you know, for dispatch. Okay, cool. And that's when I started dispatching, like, officially, like, you know what I mean? But um, after that, that that company called me over. Another company called me over offering me more pay. Because the first company, when I started dispatching, they offered me $15 an hour. Mm. 
What and year I was that? Would, this was um, the year the pandemic hit, actually. Okay. Yeah, because actually, no, the year, yeah, the year the pandemic hit, but the the whole dispatching, um, uh, you know, process, it started, like, when I was already, like, in my 20s, yeah, in my 20s, but this was when it was uh, the year 2020, so two years ago, so I was, what, 22 at the time? Mm-hmm. So I already had technically two years under the belt, you know, of uh, over the road dispatching because I would do it sometimes on the side with that company that, that yeah. I learned from. So at 2020, uh, this was uh, August of 2020. Yes, August 2020. Um, I get called by a company. Can I name drop the company? You got to <laughs> own it if, you, if yeah. you're going to, you know, you, <laughs> you got to sign it. You got to sign it. I'm just the messenger. All right. Uh, if there's anybody from this company, saludos a todos mis choferes de la compañía ULS Express. So I got hired by this company called ULS Express. It's off of uh, Delamo and Santa Fe, right? Yeah. So um, they hired me. At first, they wanted me for a uh, container um What's it called? Uh, container inventory. So pretty much I would just count the containers and then um, I would say like what um, what area they're in. And then I would go to, you know, take it to dispatch and then uh, I would help them out with the paperwork. Mm-hmm. Right. And then that's when they were like, okay, yeah, you can come to dispatch already. All right, cool. You know, came to dispatch. That's when I heard about all these ports, Hanjin, you know, Yang Min. I heard about PRA, ITS. That's when my journey started with, you know, the real Four deal. Days. Yeah, the yeah. real deal was already up, and you know what I mean? So I started learning on my own, like, okay, they gave me the websites. Let me see like, what websites am I going to be using, you know, what terminals each uh, container are going to start coming from. And then I got to start learning this whole demerge, this per diem, uh, tunnel damage, don't UTL. Cry, about to cry. <laughs> no, no, my bad. It's because I'm starting to sweat, bro. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I started to learn from the other dispatchers, and then they would tell me, okay, look, this container is going to come here to the yard. It's going to be a pre pool, and then it's going to be going to, like, like Amazon or, like, whatever other, you know, uh, distribution that we had. And I'm like, all right, cool, cool, cool. Okay, so this is called a pre pool when you pull it to the yard. Okay, mm-hmm. cool, cool, cool. And they're like, but don't forget about that pre pool because the next day it needs to deliver. So don't forget about it. All right, cool, cool. All right, sweet. You know, but that's when like the whole, um, you know, dispatch journey started with uh, Dreyage. And then I started liking it. I'm like, you know what? Like, this is something that I do see doing for a while because it's literally drivers, you know, come to my window. Hey, uh, ready to go. All right, cool. I'm like, Got a 40 here in the yard. I can do a dual transaction at LBCT. Okay, so that's good. You're going to pick up this 40 that's in uh, k row. You're going to uh, take it to Piri. You're going to pick up this load and bring it back to the yard. Cool. I was like, dude, that's freaking easy. I'm like, just the only thing is you dispatching them is your job. But let's say them going to that terminal, it's a long line to get in. That's out of your control. You know what I mean? So I was like, okay, cool. Like, you know, I was dispatching this and this and this. And I'm like, you know, yeah, this is something I want to do, you know, every mm-hmm. day. And every day when I was coming home, I would always call my dad, you know, because my dad is a, he's an OTR driver, right? So I would call my dad, hey, dad, you know, you know, this and this happened at work, you know, and, you know, like I'm joyful. I'm like, you know, like I like yeah, doing yeah. this, you know what I mean? Yeah. But that was the beginning of my journey. Yeah. Now I'm just like, such and such happen, you know, but you know, we'll get more into details with that. But yeah, I've been doing it now, you know, to present day, and I don't, I don't think about if, like, like if if I'm not going to be needed anymore, or like, I don't think that oh, there's no job security. There's job security. Yeah, now you know your value. Like you yeah. built up your your experience. Yeah, and so, you can uh, mm-hmm. confidently position yourself if needed. Yeah, dude. Like as soon as I. I updated my resume that, hey, I'm a poor dispatcher now. Mm-hmm. A gang of companies were calling me. Are you on LinkedIn? Uh, I used to. Yeah. Is that a thing? I used to be on LinkedIn? I feel like it's kind of like, oh, yeah, I used to be on Tinder. So, <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. No, yeah, but I had my, my resume and everything on LinkedIn, and I kept getting calls from different companies, and I'm with ULS, so I'm just like, 
Okay, these companies are offering me sixteen, a dollar more, seventeen, two dollars more, okay, seventeen fifty. So I'm like, God, these guys are really you know, offering me more money, you know, for for me, you mm-hmm. know, to dispatch for them. And then uh, well, I'm gonna name drop another company, but um I ended up transitioning to another company. Actually before I tell you that, um no yeah, I'll tell you right now, but mm-hmm. I transitioned to another company called TTSI, um, which they have uh, the trading company HLT, mm-hmm. which uh, my compa right here, that's where I met him. Mm, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's where I, I truly started growing more my knowledge with that company, TTSI, because I never did free flow. I never did anything called a peel off. Mm-hmm. That company did a lot of it. So I'm like, holy crap, like, what's free flow? And what's a peel off? What's. You know, and they taught me more of what I thought I knew. Mm. So when I started getting into this, this whole free flow situation, I liked it even more. I'm like, wait, so you mean that there's loads that you don't have to ask the container number? You don't have to ask for a pin number? You just give them a code or you give them your SCAC and they automatically give you a ticket? I'm like, yeah. that's way easier, you know? Yeah. For a dispatcher, for a driver, I know sometimes they do have to go through stuff when it comes to like free flow peel off. Um, yeah, when they change the pile, and then yeah. everyone's there, and, and then they changed yeah. it, and then and then everyone on the yeah, by the time you tic-tac. get over there, uh huh, there's no more cans. Yeah, that 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 actually frustrates me a lot, man. It's like, dude, like you you guys gave us a good ticket for free flow, like why aren't you at least you know cut off our drivers? Hey, like this is the last ticket for free flow. Yeah, you know, but yeah, like. Um, that that has happened and it still continues to happen where like, they tell us, hey, no more free flow. I'm like, you know what I would do during free flow stuff? Mm-hmm. I would I would call him in in the order that I was. So if I was like fourth in the line or whatever, it'll be the fourth container. And I'll call it in. And if it was one that I, you know, I didn't really, you know, yeah. <laughs> let's see, pendejo, and then, you know, let someone go around me, mm-hmm. then they'll get that one and I'll get the one next. That is what I wanted. Yeah, Simon. Yeah, like. A lot of drivers do that. Like, yeah, oh, I'm up next, or uh, I'm I'm three trucks back, and they'll re- report like, okay, okay, mm. this guy, the third one there. Mm. And I'm like, okay, Let's take a picture of it, and mm. then I'm like, okay, that load's going to uh, Carson, that load's going to Compton, mm-hmm. that load's going to Torrance, or it's going to Redlands mm-hmm. or something. Mm-hmm. And then they'll come up with like, oh, they gave me another one, cool. Mm. And they're like, all right, what's the one you got? I, I'm pretty sure they can. They I'm did pretty, that. Maybe they're like, oh happen. yeah, go around me, go around me. Yeah. And then. The, <laughs> They report another one, and it's one that's here locally. Or, yeah, they or go not. back for another. Yeah, they see? go back for another. So I'm like, yeah, you know, I get it. You yeah. know, I get it. I don't blame the drivers for doing that. <laughs> but yeah, like, like I was saying, like, me dispatching now, like, I, I don't see myself doing anything else for the next four years. I want to do this for quite a while. You know, I've well, met a lot of trucker guys, mm-hmm. and a lot of them are buddies of mine. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm just like, dude, like, you guys help me out a lot. You know, because you guys no, help them out a lot. No, 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 no. Not like that. <laughs> you guys are my eyes. Like um, like that one incident that happened at the Vincent Thomas Bridge where the guy, you know, climbed on. Oh. I didn't know about it. The drivers called me like, mm-hmm. hey, like like the V uh, the VT bridge is down. I was like, VT bridge? Like, what, like, what do you mean? Like, yeah, like uh, they're saying that someone's on top. Mm-hmm. I was like, uh, are they going to jump off? Like, well, I don't know. Like, like the, the police, you know, just closed off the bridge and... Uh, there's a guy up there, and he looks like he's threatening to jump off. I'm like, well, I yeah. don't know, you know. So, so now you reroute. Yeah, I have yeah. to reroute drivers. But the thing is, that if they have containers that that there's terminals that are not re- receiving those containers, I have to all right, bring it back. You're gonna grab another steamship line container, and you're gonna take it to such and such yeah. port that's not on that side or something. Yeah. Or they have to go around just to get to the point where they were gonna go to. You know what I mean? But yeah, like the the drivers are my eyes. You know what I mean? So. Um, I always tell, you know, like, like my buddies and all my drivers that I have now, Hey, you guys are my eyes. So if there's something that you see at the port or like something's going on, you let us know. Cause that helps us out a lot. The mm-hmm. communication is key, you know? So, and that's what I like about this company, like mm-hmm. communicating with your drivers. You know what I mean? It's like you, you get like a bond, you know what I mean? And that's what I feel like that's what made me sometimes go go ahead. <laughs> I feel like, yeah yeah okay sometimes sometimes but we'll get some more detail with that. But like I feel like that's what really made me stick to it. It's like dude like I see you know dispatching in both 
you know, point of views, the business wise and the drivers wise. So it's like, like you guys both help me out. I'm gonna help you out. So I feel like that's what made me stick to it for a while. You know what I mean? Hmm. Yeah. Is it hard sometimes to differentiate? Uh, you're my buddy, but like your relative told you at work, we're at work. We're not buddies. Oh yeah. And so yeah, do you apply that? Or yeah. No? Yeah. Like, um, I do apply that. Like, um, I have many trucking buddies and, uh, there's a few that do work for me, you know, not not work for me, but like we work in the same company. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, and um, I have a specific route. Let's say I have a route. It, it's two loads a night or two loads a day that's going to, let's say, Mariloma. And I know that my buddy, he's a good driver. He can get it done, but it's like, hey, I, I can't give you a special privilege to roll. It's like, like I start, let's say, uh, like a rotation. Like, hey, you know mm, what? Le toca okay. este chofer. Ya para el otro día, pues, you know, it'll be your, oh, okay. you know what I'm saying? Get up, get up. Fair. Yeah, it, it's because I got to be fair. He's a fair dispatcher. Yeah, and, and and there's a lot of drivers that they like that. Oh, yeah, this guy's fair, you know. Oh, you know what? No, this guy's an asshole, you know. It's a, you know what I mean? Yeah. But that's something that, that I don't want to be, you know. Like, hey, you know what? Like, this 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 business is awesome, but it, it can also be stressful to to. to you know, for both parties, the driver yeah. and the dispatcher. We're here to work. We're here to enjoy, you know, what we do. There's some unfortunate things that happen in this business, and there's some things that, you know, like, hey, you get excited for, you know. Like, like drivers get excited. Yes, I did three rounds. Yes, mm -hmm. I did four rounds in one shift. I'm like, damn, dude, like, mm -hmm. you know, calmate, you know what I mean? But, but like, there's drivers that que, que se agüitan, like, oh, you know, like, I only did an empty and I didn't even get a load out. The lazy motherfuckers, damn, save some for the rest of us. I you do know? have a lot of lazy drivers, actually. Yeah. And I had one that I actually caught him one time. He was sleeping on the job. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm not going to name drop him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I know I was, he's I watching. I was going to say it. I know. Eh. Ponte las pilas, güey. No you, mames. You know who you are, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but I caught him one time sleeping. Hmm. And because uh, I was what? working a night shift one time, and I looked in the camera, and I was like. Was he playing Super Mario? No. <laughs> Before? <laughs> No, because, like, I'm like, hey, this was hasn't reported himself in, like, two hours. And I'm like, okay, where is he? And I look at his, at his GPS. He's been idling for an hour and a half. I'm mm. like, okay. And then I, I sent him a text. Hey, bro, you everything good? No response. Mm. I check his camera. Fool's was like. Oh, shit. Knocked out, yeah. bro. Pero aquí sigo roncando. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, he, like, he was knocked out. And um, the other night dispatcher, he took a picture of it and he sent it to my boss. Mm. And um, it's the, they ended up letting him go. Do you get a lot of shit from the drivers for the cameras? No. Front facing? No. Or, you know? I actually have to tell the guys, don't mess with the cameras. Oh, okay. Yeah, because there's drivers that can, they'll, they'll put down their... Visor the, or something? Yeah, their visor. Uh -huh. Or like they'll put like a post-it note and they'll cover it. Mm. And then we get notified, like, hey, there's a there's a discrepancy with the safety camera because mm -hmm. when it's recording or like when it's it's a capturing video, we get a fault code, like, hey, it's the camera's misplaced or camera uh, yeah. is not capturing. It might trigger it like an accident because you know yeah. when there's a rollover, shit's all over the place. Yeah, and maybe and it covers it. Yeah, exactly. It's mm -hmm. like, dude, like, like if something were to happen to the driver, you know, God forbid, it's like we have it's the video surveillance. But if this guy is over covering it, and it's like, dude, like. Mm -hmm. Like if something were to happen to you And we have no video evidence What do you expect us to do? Exactly There's one I'm not going to mention names or nothing mm -hmm. But The the camera was going to mm -hmm. Be helpful Because it shows Before that driver passed away That He was not wearing What they're assuming he was wearing Which led to his distraction mm -hmm. They're saying that he was wearing AirPods Or mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Being distracted Simon. So you can see he gets off without that mm -hmm. So it's like yeah, that camera is proof, you know. Mm -hmm. So it, it goes both ways. Like if you know you're not doing shady shit, then don't trip. Yeah, right. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, so that's why I was like, you know what, like like a lot of stuff like that, you know, you know there's tragic stuff that that happens. Like hey, you know what, like you know, but that's that's the way, that's the way the business. Like mm -hmm. we don't sign up for it, but stuff like that happens. Yeah, you the know? business. You said the business. So and how can I get in the business, bro? I, I know there's someone out there wanna. Wants Maybe. to learn dispatch. Yeah, someone so. out there sweating, coming out of a hot <laughs> container. You know, like, hey, they man, wanna I, I don't want to be unloading this no more. What's um, what's my next move? What? 
So, how okay. Do you be, how do you become a dispatcher at little, the ports? Uh -huh, little friendly advice. To become a dispatcher is very, very tough. Because um, we were speaking about earlier how, hey, you know, it's the same as, as the trucking, but trucking to school. For dispatching, mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. no schools. Mm -hmm. You need to actually come with experience already under your belt. So there's companies, a lot of um, like small family companies, that they'll actually give up the time for you to learn. Now, with this whole like AB5 situation, a lot of these smaller companies are starting to dwindle. They're starting to, you know what I mean? Like I actually just recently hired like, well, my boss, but the company just recently hired, I think like maybe five new drivers, but mm -hmm. they came from small family trucking companies. And with this whole like, like AB5 situation, they had to let them go because they were getting paid 1099, but they're not owner ops. They're just regular drivers. So I guess they got let go like, hey, like I can't have you no more because they just couldn't afford to do yeah. the conversion they, they thought yeah, it was they couldn't afford just, it I, I guess yeah and then i'm just like whoa and they don't want to keep doing it to keep the risk yeah because now it's a, la a free a free for all like i'm gonna sue you i'm gonna sue you something and like people want to go back in time to when it started yeah I to do. when you know i mean to wh whatever year 2019 i believe yeah it was 2019 when when it came it, onto the table yeah, yeah. And, it, and it was just at a pause but it was there yeah it was already law i believe yeah, so yeah, it was there. Uh -huh, I wonder if they can go back in time. Like, you owe me all this. Yeah, I see, Mon. So it's, it's so going to be it's interesting. Like, yeah, it is going to be interesting. But, like, what was the question? Oh, yeah. The, yeah, you were saying I, you ended yeah. up with drivers that were at a company before. They yeah. were a small company, but now then, they're... Now, now they're with us. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a lot of, you know, smaller companies that they'll teach you at a dispatch. But honestly, like... I want to, like, this is how passionate I am with dispatch. We're, like, one day, if, let's say that I decide not to dispatch anymore, I want to open up, like, let's say, like, a small business mm -hmm. where they teach you how to dispatch. I think that there's a need for that, I think so. Yeah, because, dude, like, the business is going to boom. Like, even with this AB5 stuff, the business is still going to boom. Because, like, again, like, with the whole, like, smaller companies that are starting to dwindle, some of these small companies are actually being sold to the bigger companies. Like the bigger corporation companies. What does it take for them to sell it? Like, what are they buying? They're buying more than a name. They're buying, mm -hmm. like, they're, the contract they have? Yeah, they're buying the, the contract. Yeah, you see? So, so they're buying the contracts. The The bigger companies are going to um, expand their customers now. Mm -hmm. okay. They're going to, you know, take their trucks. And if there's trucks that they're going to be, you know, going out the door, mm -hmm. uh, it's from the ports. Um, I think... Don't quote me on this, but I think I saw it on the Port of Long Beach page that um, they were giving out an incentive for for uh, truck drivers who are selling their diesel trucks to go uh, C and G. Yeah, that's right. What, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of companies that they actually started taking on. They're like, hey, you know what? Um, I'm selling my diesel truck, you know, for for C and G. It's cool because they're giving you money, mm -hmm. you know, for your truck. So it's like it kind of you know, benefits them, but it's like, you know, me personally with the whole CNG situation, it's like, if a CNG truck breaks down, you need a CNG technician, not just any diesel mechanic, not any truck, you need a CNG technician, the guy who actually knows. So the network has to grow as well. Right now, diesel yeah. is like all over the place, right? You, you yeah. can find a shop anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, but me personally, yeah, like the business is going to be booming and like, I feel like it, between now and like the next five to seven years, there's gonna be a necessity for more dispatchers. Because okay. again, with this whole like AB five thing, like a lot of these smaller fleet companies, mm -hmm. like they're ended up either they're gonna sell their trucks or they're gonna sell their 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 company to another bigger company. You know what I mean? Because like um like my previous company TTSI, they they bought out carriers. They're like, hey, like, we're gonna buy out your guys' corporation and you guys are gonna merge with us, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, they have, like, maybe, like, I want to say, like, nine or ten different carriers under the TTSI name, right? Oh, man. That's yeah, so I'm just, like... Blowing up. Said, yeah, like... I wonder how they... um, What do you call it? Oh, what's that word I'm looking for? Mm. Yeah. Anyways, like, the mm -hmm. value. How do they value it? Like, the worth of that carrier... Uh, That's a that very asset, good right? I Let's say no it clue. has one account that generates <laughs> a million a year. They probably say, I'll give you a fraction of what you make a year to give it up or mm -hmm. something. Something huh? like that. Yeah. It's, it's, that would be an interesting subject if yeah. you get one of them that has bottom. 
yeah we need a cfo it. you know like a chief financial officer yeah, you know? yeah. someone who knows about the money and well, all that. but there's definitely moves going on out here then yeah that's that's what i'm saying like with with like the booming of, of the industry because chucky's not gonna go anywhere bro you know what i mean yeah like there's there's these self-driving trucks but like dude like how many self-driving trucks are you gonna think are gonna be around it's like no like you're gonna need a driver to conduct the truck if the truck fails. So you're gonna need somebody in there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? With this whole Nikola Tesla truck, like dude, like you can, you know, barely haul what like the truck's like about what like like twenty something thousand pounds or something like that. But it's like you can't haul anything that's overweight with that truck because it's gonna drain the battery like hell. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Top of that, if you're gonna go, let's say on a bridge, the truck slows down. Mm-hmm. And you're gonna cause traffic, you know what I mean? It's like yeah. it's to me, it's like uh, they want to add, you know, yeah, like like they want to innovate, you know, they want you know to is to cut down the fuel costs, they want to make everything more is to eco friendly, more green. I get mm-hmm. it, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? But it's like, dude, like it's gonna kind of slow down the the production a little bit. You know what I mean? It's like it takes time to adapt to it yeah because it, yeah it is gonna take time with to diesel adapt. at least you know how much diesel you burn mm-hmm. on the load you're running and then you know how to quote it based on miles or yeah. whatever yeah exactly. so you don't know the metrics or whatever goes into how much bang can i get for my mm. buck with cng or mm-hmm. ev you know yeah I see so, uh-huh. but Back to the whole, how do we become a dispatcher? You got some oh, yeah. basic steps oh. some before I threw you all over the place? Yeah, it's cool. So, how to become a dispatcher? First off, you got to, you know, think, why do you want to be a dispatcher? Does it, what catches your attention with becoming a dispatcher, right? For me, what caught my attention was, you know what? Like, I get to dispatch pretty much the money to the drivers. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The drivers are going to make money because I have, like, I have the loads. If I give you such and such load, you know what I mean? So, that's what attracted me. Like, hey, like, you know what? I'm gonna be so powerful. Like, yeah, over not us. powerful, but it's like, hey, you know what? <laughs> not, not powerful, but it's like, hey, like team. Yeah, it's like, dude, like we're all gonna, you know, work together, and then the, they're gonna be the ones that are gonna, you know, move the containers. So I'm like, yeah, you know, I want to do that. You know what I mean? Um, and then second off, it's like you got to be prepared because this 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 business, um, it does get very stressful. Mm-hmm. So when I first started, like I didn't experience any stress because a lot of drivers, they understand when they see a newbie, oh, he's a newbie, you know? Yeah. Compared to someone who's like a veteran or someone who's like, like with experience, they'll give them like a little bit of a hassle. Yeah. Like, Hey, like, you know, ponte las pilas, yeah. you know what I mean? but they won't be that with a newbie. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, you know, be prepared for the stress that's going to come. And on top of that, if you do good with eight to 10 hour shifts sitting down, then you should be good. <laughs> yeah. But um, me personally, it's like you got to find somebody who's in the business that's willing to teach you. You know what I mean? Um, you got to learn all the ports. And I advise, you know, take a drive down the ports. You know what I mean? Like when I was actually coming on the way over here, um, I was on the 47 and I saw LBCT. Two vessels were just docking in. And I was going out to Hanjin, another two vessels. I, you know, when I'm passing the bridge, I saw, you know, Yang Min on my right. Another two vessels. And I saw... You know, it's evergreen. They're they're loading a vessel. So I'm like, what does that know? mean to you? What about the ports? Yeah, yeah, when you scan it like that and you see things. When you scan it like that, you tend to see like, hey, like we're gonna be busy. We're gonna be busy. Okay. Yeah, you see the money. Like it's literally on the water. The money's on the water. So you see the money. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And oh yeah, and on top of that, pay wise, um, a lot of these companies, like I was telling you, like the first company was paying me fifteen an hour. Especially like in 2020, 15 hours, nothing, bro. You know what I mean? I'm not bashing on nobody if you're making 15 hours. I'm not bashing on you, but I'm just telling you that, you know, minimum wage, like, you, if you want to make a good living, you, you got to put in like 50 plus hours a week, you know? But but pay-wise, um, it's one of like the best paying um, infrastructure. I don't know if I'm saying that, that word correctly, but like, it does pay you good, you know what I mean? But... Like how you were saying earlier, it pays you what you're worth. What do you bring to the table of of the business? What do you bring to to the dispatch department? What do you bring? Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's how I, you know different companies they'll differentiate the pay because it's actually depending on experience. And on top yeah. of that, it's like how are you hustling? You know what I mean? Yeah. 
I feel like if, if it's hard to let you go because it would affect their flow, that, that's when your, your bargaining uh, power comes in. Yeah. Like, like how mm -hmm. would it cripple your operation if I walk away right now? And then you know your worth. Like, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if that made sense. Like, yeah. Um, like, I get you because, like, there's – I've met dispatchers that have to do their – they're quick. They're quick mm -hmm. to dispatch. They're quick to, 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 you know, see like any mess ups. They're quick to, to get if the truck driver's going. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And there's dispatchers that they're super slow, or dispatchers that they don't know what they're doing, mm -hmm. but they're still with the company. For dispatchers that they don't know what they're doing, I feel like it's easier for a company to just ah, you're replaceable. There's mm -hmm. other dispatchers that that will be willing to work for me. Yeah. But if there's the gaps, you know. Like, yeah, 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 just the you know pay gaps. So, so every dispatcher. Within every company is gonna be you know different pay gaps. Like I was telling you, you know, mm -hmm. you know earlier, when I was at ULS, they were paying me fifteen. There were other companies that they needed dispatches, and they were offering me more. And now, thankfully, the company that I'm at now, I'm getting paid like way more than what I used to make, and I'm grateful for it. So that's one of the reasons why the men like, like I decided, hey, like dispatches for me. You know what I mean? But yeah, like I would say, find somebody within the business. Um, and you know, if, if God allows me, I'll retire as a dispatcher and I'll open up a dispatch service company where I'll teach you guys how to dispatch. You know what I mean? Uh, there's a lot of actually drivers that, that they ask like, Hey, like what are some pointers for dispatching? But you could you do, know. get your hustle on now, do a little ebook and you know, that's what I'm actually sell a digital on. product. Yeah. That's what and I'm working on. There's you know, no too. like. The only overhead is maybe the hosting fee and the mm. website, you know? Yeah, and on top of that, with, like, the websites for the ports, you, you need to have, this to, like, a SCAC and credentials of a trucking company. So if I were to show people, like, oh, yeah, like, these are the websites, I'm giving them, like, the credentials of a different company. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. So you kind of have to... You could create logins, but you can make appointments. Yeah, right? yeah. On I some. can make appointments. Mm. Yeah, so it's like I would have to show them, let's say, with my credentials that I have, I would have to show them like with a PowerPoint or show them, you know what I mean? Or, or sometimes show them physically. Oh. You know I wonder I mean? if you could get like your own SCAT code for the school. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You, you, you probably but never can. really yeah. go in, but just have the SCAT code for demonstration purposes. And then mm -hmm. all the guys learning use that. You won't really have yeah. any uh, uh, DOs in there or nothing like that too. No, but you, you can't get dummy DOs actually. You know what I mean? Mm. So, you know, or you can get like a blank DO and then you can just write it in or like type it in, you know, okay, okay. You know just dummy DOs, you know what I mean? Um, but for me, yeah, like I, I, I highly, like if you're trying to get into dispatch, I highly do encourage you, hey, look into it, go into companies that, let's say like if they need somebody for paperwork, you know, go into it because like that's how I started, paperwork. Because as soon as you see like what a manifest, what an interchange ticket, what a hand ticket, you know, wait time ticket is, you know what I mean? It's like... You're already in. You know what I mean? And then you can grow within a company. Like, say, hey, you know what? I want to learn dispatch. As soon as you get your foot in, into, like, a company, like a training company, you can grow. You can grow. I'll show you that. And if there's a company is. that can, they don't want you to grow, get out of that company. That's my biggest advice. If there's a company that, that's been having you do CSR or uh, paperwork and they don't want you to grow, get out of that company and switch companies right now. <laughs> that's my biggest advice. You know what I mean, but right. they might get stuck in that position. Then. Yes, and right. there's something like in this industry. Yeah, and it kind of creates in. a dependency, right? Like they have to stay because yeah, they don't have n no experience to bounce. Yeah, it's like no, this business is for everyone to grow. You know what I mean? Not just dispatchers or not just CSRs. Everyone grows. You know what I mean? So, that's well, my advice. You're a dispatcher now, but what what did you want to be growing up? Like, uh, I wanted to be a welder. A welder. Yeah, okay. but what stopped me from doing it was my eyes. My eyes are bad, so can't do it. Like yeah, you, like I would need to have surgery or, or something. But I wanted to be a welder when I first started. I was like, you know what, I want to be a welder. But then I'm like, you know what, nah, I can't do it. What well, What would you make with the welding, or what would you do? Exactly what I'm making right now, <laughs> as a welder. Yeah. Like, oh no no, I mean like, uh, uh, what oh, would you create? Oh create. We'll weld like these small little boxes, but like. What I wanted to do was uh, is the piping, so pretty much like like the foundation. Oh, okay. So it's the weld the pipes and the foundation. Okay. You know, so that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I had mm. heard of underwater underwater welding. I, I, yeah, that, that that's another thing in my pocket. But um, yeah, I was like, you know what? I have asthma too. Mm. I have a hard time breathing. That's probably not meant, you know it's not meant for me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
but you know thanks for sharing that mm -hmm. w would you ever consider getting your license your cdl i have actually yeah um, i learned how to drive i never actually decided to go apart to get my cdl but i learned how to drive when i actually was growing up with my dad I asked him, I want you to teach me how to drive. And he's like, no, nah, you're going to be a dispatcher. No. <laughs> yeah? He told me there's the, you know, there's a morrito. I was like, nah, like, you're going to be oh, a dispatcher. Oh, my son's going to be in the office with yeah. the AC and everything. Yeah. Yeah, me and my older brother, we're the only, you know, dispatchers between us. But, mm -hmm. like, our entire family is, is a trucking company. Oh, you, you know? got, oh, okay. So, you yeah. got, okay. Yeah, my older brother is a dispatcher for my uncle's as a company. So, oh. So, he's a dispatcher there. Yeah, he was know? in a... Uh, <laughs> No, he did not. He did not play um, it's the Super Mario Brothers when I was, you know. <laughs> but yeah, my dad told me and my brother, you know, me and my older brother, you guys are gonna be dispatchers. So, uh, there's just little lessons along the way. Sometimes mm -hmm. stuff like that you can't explain. Like mm -hmm. your intention was good, but it just was perceived differently yeah, it's, like, it's how you look at things right so from, from yeah from their point of view you were fucking around yeah it's you know? like you know what i mean but you know <laughs> what are the odds though that you have a type being uh -huh. you're learning to type with a fucking game it's kind of yeah not yeah. gonna believe you you know yeah and it's like what the heck you know it's like why was he playing video games in a company you know what i mean it's like what the heck <laughs> pinche morro <laughs> Yeah. Is it hard when you're dispatching? Is it hard to not take things personal sometimes with, with drivers or even the terminals if you ever do make some calls? Yeah. It, well, it just depends on the dispatcher. But for me, like when I started getting more into it, yes, it was hard. But um, in this industry, you, you do have to have thick skin. Like dry, like a lot of us, the truck drivers have trucker talk. You know, like the way they, they can, they'll, come at, they'll come at you, it's like, like they're not being rude. They're just, you know, I see cotorrean, you know what mm. I mean? And then on top of that, like there's certain terminals. Like I had, you know, uh, like I had experience with a certain terminal that they didn't want to help us out because they're like, well, your container is UTL. Oh, like when can you guys find it? When we can. Well, when mm -hmm. would that be? There's no ETA. You know, like, okay, like they don't want to help us. Like they're saying it's UTL. When you stumble on it. When yeah. you stumble upon it. Yeah, it's like, well, well, when we get to it or something, I'm like, okay. But it's like, you got to understand them. It's like, it's one container that you're asking for versus like 7,000 to like 10,000 in one block or something. Mm -hmm. know, or like 50 to 100,000 in a whole terminal. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, you, you kind of, yeah, just, just don't take it personal. How do you, you come know? up with those numbers, bro? Oh no, I, I'm just guessing. Oh, like, <laughs> this isn't accurate numbers. I'm, I'm just guessing. I'm that. just that's guessing. It sounded really good. You see, so it's like, like I'm asking for one container, but there's there's thousands of containers in yeah. one terminal. You know what I mean? So Somet the, yeah, yeah. Sometimes they fuck up on the rows. That's it's happened to me. UTL yeah, that's on my row, and I look to the left, it's over there. So I just, yeah, just it, switch over. Yeah, that's that's happened. You know, with my drivers a lot. You know, but yeah, that's it's. Just try not to take anything personal, you guys. And then on top of that, drivers, try not to take nothing personal from the from the dispatchers, please. You know, both parties have patience. You know what I mean? You're both to make, you know, you're both there to make money. So it's just, you know, be patient. You know what I mean? That's all I can say. Just be patient. Mm -hmm. Don't take nothing personal. You know what I mean? What's the most disrespectful thing a, a, a driver told you? A driver, ooh, that I'm a POS. I don't curse, so I was like, oh. yeah, that I'm a POS. It's like, hey, like you're, you know, it's like, how? Oh, well, you always dispatch me last. Is this also? I'm like, hey, dude, I'm sorry that you feel that way. Like, I actually, you know, try to talk to him. It's with respect. But, yeah, one time there was a driver. He was like, oh, yeah, he's a POS. I'm like, what the heck? But, like, I, I, I'm helping you all the time. <laughs> how, how am I a POS? You know what I mean? Um, like, nah, you know, he's a dick. He's an asshole. He says, yeah. you know what I mean? So I'm like, like, it goes back to like, hey, like, don't take any person. But it's like, hey, like, when stuff like that, like, when drivers tell me that, I'm like, hey, like, I thought I was cool with you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, like, I had a driver once I called me a POS. Like, oh, like, you're, you're like a, like a waste of a dispatcher. And so mm. I'm just like, yeah, whatever. He's not driving anymore, you know? Mm. So, like, yeah, all right, cool. It's true. Like, it's a saying I might butcher it like I always do on here, but, um, Twice I did good that I heard never. Mm -hmm. Once I did bad that I heard ever. 
mm-hmm. forever and ever and ever. Yeah. They focus on the bad, you know? Yeah. No, yeah. Like, and and I try to, you know, tell drivers, okay, you know, that's it for the day. Thank you for, you know, thank you for, for your time and your service and your patience. We'll see you tomorrow. You know, I try to talk to them with as much respect as I can. But yeah, that one time, yeah, they were like, yeah, you're a POS and you're a waste of a dispatcher. I'm like, oh, damn. You know, that. <laughs> yeah, just like, <laughs> teardrop. <laughs> Wipe them with your money. Dispatcher. Yeah, you know. But, um, what's, yeah. Your, what's your biggest fear as a dispatcher? Last free day? No, actually, the biggest fear was, was what happened recently, losing a driver. That's oh. my biggest fear, losing a driver. Because then you miss all the last few days. <laughs> so no, no, the it's day. the missing a driver, like, like fatally. Oh, man, that's okay. That's my biggest fear. Okay, okay. You know, In, th- in the way you get attached to some? Yeah, because it's like, like uh, you know, yeah. it was a good guy, it was a good driver, yeah. you know, and then one thing leads to the next, you're like, dude, he's gone. You know what I mean? Or she's gone. Because there's women drivers, too. Yeah. You know? Okay, okay. You know, or like, you know what I mean? It's... But anything that has to do with me losing a driver, you know, is fatally, that's my fear. That's mm. my biggest fear. Because I, no dispatcher and no company signs up for that. No driver either signs up for that. You know what I mean? It's like, that's that's my biggest fear, losing a driver. You know what I mean? So, but anything else, like LFD, per diem, uh, the merged company can, you know, they can handle that. Mm-hmm. But losing a driver, you know, is with an accident or, you know, God forbid, death, it's like, that that's that's something tough that that dispatchers go through i mean yeah. and drivers yeah there's some companies that show love like mm-hmm. uh, a driver that passed away there's a company that they offered to match the gofundme whatever they raised mm-hmm. the company would match that so simon. that's love yeah that's know? love simon so much respect to them mm-hmm. uh or como se dice you know uh appreciate that you know i appreciate yeah. that they do that for the drivers mm-hmm. um so we mentioned the last few days. Can you school us real quick on the cycle of a container? Mm-hmm. When so, it, as soon as it comes in on that vessel. W- w- so from what I understand, when a container comes into the vessel, it has anything from from five to nine days, I believe it is, mm-hmm. for it to be pulled out. Um, if you go past that day, it accumulates um, it's the last few days or it's the merge. But now, like the terminals, have something called a congestion fee where... You have to pay the demerge, and if there's congestion fee, you have to pay that too. So one of the terms that does that is it's the TTI. They have something called a congestion fee. So the container's not in demerge yet, but it has a congestion fee. So I'm like, what the hell? Hmm. That's weird, right? You can't win. Yeah, you can't win. So it's like, dude, like now the now the ports are making it a little bit harder for you to pick so up. So if you're container. good at okay, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, and is that a new the, thing? Yeah, okay. it, I think it came into effect like late last year or okay. the, or the beginning of this year. And then with with APM, it's like now, like before, if you were to have like a like an appointment for let's say thirteen hundred, you can pick it up at the start of the shift. Now, if you can do that, but they're gonna charge you for an earlier appointment. So I'm like, Wait, dude, I'm, I'm still stuck on that first. One. How do you create a congestion and then charge a fee for a creation for something you created? I have no idea. Dude. They catch on that the carriers were charging congestion fees to the customer, I, and now they like, hey, we want some of that. I think, yeah, because I think it's like, you know how sometimes like the end gate can be pretty bad, yeah. TTI? I think they're just charging that. I'm just like, or oh. something, I don't know, because like, you know, some dispatchers, like, like they'll see that like, at TTI, they have the congestion fee and then demerge amount. Oh. So I'm like, okay, so if it's not on demerge, but it has congestion fees, so you're telling me that I can't pick up the container because it has that? And then if I pay the congestion fee, but now it accumulated the merge, well, now I got to pay that. What's the price difference, that you, if you know? A congestion fee at TTI is 100 bucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, the merge fee can go anything from like 250 to 450 per day. At what point does it double or where it stays? It, no, it keeps going. And so, okay. you, 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 like, I've seen a demerge rate $13,000. Mm. Would you say tr- uh, drivers then have power on a Friday with the, with the last free day? Because... Otherwise, or maybe Saturday. Are there last few days? There's last few days Saturdays. Yeah. Those, <laughs> those are the ones. Those yeah. are the ones that you know. Yeah. This this past Friday, because this is a three day weekend, mm. someone might have had a lot of pool. Nah, I'll do it for double. You want it or not? Because <laughs> the last free day, buddy. You, you yeah. pull up on Tuesday. How much are you gonna owe on that? Right. Yeah, I see more. Yeah, you know what I mean. Because with the last few days, yeah, like it'll it'll accumulate. You know what I mean? Two fifty a day, or, or even three hundred, four fifty a day can accumulate. 
Is there a website or something where the drivers can check if it's a last free day without having to ask you? Because a lot of times um, they might not yeah. say. I think, oh, what, what was that one uh, website? There's one website that the truckers use that you can check. Um, uh, what is it called? Um, I can't remember, like, uh, but it's, it's um, what's that website called? The the ones where is the truckers check like if there's like like a long in gate is a uh, peer trucker yeah peer trucker has I think that that little um, you can check the container actually oh okay. peer trucker yeah without a specific terminal attached to it just the container I think yeah um, again don't quote me on this but I think mm -hmm. it's the you can check the the, the container and then it'll say it's what terminal is coming yeah. from and then the last free day something like that imagine you get it on a Saturday you know like oh look it's the last free day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyways, the, just the chucho yeah. in me. Just the chucho, the ruff, ruff. <laughs> So, yeah, real quick, did I interrupt mm. that process? No, so no, vessel, that's, that's the appointment, and yeah, um, congestion fee. So you get it out, and yeah, now you gotta get it out. Now you gotta deliver it. So, the turn time with is the unloading that container. It depends on the warehouse. Mm -hmm. If the warehouse unloads it within two days, cool, pick it up and you know take it back. Because mm -hmm. I think. As soon as it outgates, I think it has like five free. It's the five free days, so you have five days to return that container. If not, it occurs per diem, or like mm -hmm. it'll tell you like the fecha, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. on, on the container, like when the per diem. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah. So. Um, and that's it. They get that's an it. appointment for an empty to return. Yeah, and mission the, that's, impossible. Sometimes that's the thing. Like appointments for empties sometimes suck, man. It's just like. Like, we've been having, like, an MSC, it's a container at our yard for, like, maybe, like, the past three, four days. And it's, like, the per diem comes up, I think it's, like, on Wednesday. You know what I mean? So, it's, yeah, like, okay, we've okay. been trying to get appointments since uh, since it got offloaded, which was, I think, when was it? Wednesday? This past Wednesday? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this past Wednesday. So oh, we're shit. Like, so since, like, yeah, so it's, like, dude. You like, could make you, an appointment for the MTN before the container has left the terminal no you oh. have to do it like like when it actually outgates you know what i mean so so it's, oh. it's you can make the, an appointment and bet it's like you're betting on it I, i'm betting that it'll be empty by then for the sake of securing this appointment oh, yeah. okay yeah. You can do that. Ding. or you can also uh chucho it as a dispatcher you can uh try to engage it as an exempt container meaning like you send an email to the terminal hey like, there's no appointments you send them like a screenshot of the proof and it shows, hey, your terminal's taking it. It's MSC is a single transaction. Yet there's no appointments. Can, you know, can you exempt this container? Nine to out of ten, they'll tell you yeah. Sometimes they'll tell you no. You know what I mean? Okay. But that's why I'm just like yeah. Sometimes we gotta you know quote unquote chew it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But as a dry, I mean as a, as a dispatcher. <laughs> you know what I mean? So what what are there, uh, the duties of a dispatcher that you're responsible for? Uh, what duties yeah. is a dispatcher responsible for briefly duties um well one you gotta make sure that you're like when you're starting your shift you gotta see what like what you're gonna be pulling for the day uh you gotta see what containers you're gonna work with you know as far as empties what terminals you're gonna work with what are they receiving where is the load gonna be going is it gonna be you know like a parking hook mm -hmm. or a uh, i'm sorry a dropping hook is it gonna be a live unload um is, are they going to be empties there that you can use to return to the port for another dual mm -hmm. transaction? You kind of have to. There's a lot of planning with it. Then. Yeah. It's not like, oh, these are the loads. Send them out. No, you got to no, make it work. Gotta, yeah, it's like, okay. okay. Are you going to go in bobtail to, to pick it up? Yeah. Are you going to is to pick up uh, a, an own chassis? Are you going to take an empty? So, um, you know what I mean? So, you got to. Oh, yeah, and on top of that, it's like when you dispatch the load, who knows if it's going to be UTL? Who knows if it's going to be damaged? Who knows if it's, if it's going to be hell just to get into the port? It's out of your control. You know what I mean? Can you get fired for a big demerge bill? No. You'll get your, your ass be, chewed out. But would no. that be wrongful termination? Termination? Yeah, because it's so? like it's it's out of your control. Let's say like if you try to. What if you missed the appointment and if you, you missed the appointment? You, then, to then you have it. to reschedule it. You have to reschedule it. It's like hey, I missed it. Uh, I'm gonna see like if they have appointments for later on in the day for second shift. You okay. gotta you gotta do it because it's your mess up. So you gotta fix it. You know what I mean? Has any driver um, tried to bribe you before? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I had a driver one time. That we had loads going to Fresno mm -hmm. um, at this other company that, that I was working at. And um, he wanted to give me like $1,000. Like, hey, I'll give you $1,000 a week if you give me these loads going to Fresno. You know, it, it's every day. Like, nah. 
If I give it to you, I give it to you. Don't mm-hmm. don't trip. But was he making enough to to for it to be worth it for him? Yeah, or? he was making like like eight hundred bucks per round trip. Mm-hmm. And he wanted one a day. One a day, yeah. So he, he would take the load over there, and then he would bring back an empty because it was. Uh, I think it was. Uh, what account was it? Um, I think it was. It wasn't Ross because there's there's a Ross is the account up there in Fresno. I think it's a. Shafter. Yeah, yeah, it's it Shafter. But there's one in in Fresno. I forgot I listed what account was it. I, I think it was. Um, I think it was Sony. Okay. Yeah, like there was like a there was like another charge just distribution up there in, in Fresno, so. As to they would drop there and then they bring back an empty and then they will use an empty for the next day. Oh, easy. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it was easy money. So that's what he wanted to do. Six days a week or five? Uh, five days a week because on Saturdays okay. they didn't open. So five days okay. a week. But on Friday they would take the empty, drop it in our yard, and then they would use it for Monday morning. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So it was an easy back for him, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, he offered a grand a week for me, and I'm like, no, dude. If I like, if I give it to you, it's because. You know the route, and because I know that you're gonna get the job done, I don't, I don't need to give it to you f- for money. Like I make enough for me to make an honest living. Yeah, you know I don't know. I mean? if that guy knew his numbers. Uh, how are you gonna? Yeah, like he tried to. You know what I mean? It's like, dude, like I you're don't. left know. with thir- thirty five hundred, then minus fuel. Mm-hmm. I guess for the sake of minus, you know. Yeah, I mean, he blows at least a grand, maybe for like half of the week. So it's mm-hmm. like on just fuel. Think mm-hmm. about it. So it's like. I don't uh, just here, yeah, just probably take a little more than that, but yeah, it's like like I make an honest living. You should make an honest living too. So yeah. if I give it to you, cool. If I don't, put it more. Interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah. What about? Well, yeah. Mm. Other ways, maybe bring you snacks. Try to you know. I've actually had drivers like they have bought they bought me lunch. El desayuno. Yeah. Todo. Does it feel awkward to eat it? Like you feel if you eat it, you accept. Do you feel like it comes with something, or is it? How do you I'm, know if it's really a good intention? Like they're really looking out for you, or it's like uh, yeah. getting algo in return? You the know? times that, that that's happened to me, um, a lot of drivers are like, hey, you know what? You know, I bought you este, some conchas, I bought you some tamales, and then they tell me it's because I feel like I'm not producing, so like I want to just tell you like, hey, you know what? Hey, like like in confianza, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, you know what? Like, okay, I'll help you out. You know what I mean? Because you're a cool dude. Mm-hmm. You know, you went out of your way to buy me breakfast. You know what I mean? So I'll help you out. You know what I mean? I'm not going to promise you that I'm going to help you yeah. out every day. But whatever that I can, mm-hmm. I'll have you in mind. You know what I mean? Okay. And I'll try to help you out as much as I can. Yeah. There's a lot of you know old school mean? drivers. That's the way they they would get down. That's, yeah. You know, and a lot of... They give the cafecito al dispatcher and all that. Yeah. And, and I noticed... Uh, like, like a lot of old heads would do it yeah. You know what I mean A lot of old timers A lot of us The veteranos They would do that to me So mm-hmm. I'm like You know yeah I'll help you out Because I know that you, You're a good guy You know You're honest You never It's to BS me So yeah You know Do you have any crazy Dispatch stories Um <laughs> Yeah but So At the company That I used to work for okay, Not gonna name drop it Because I don't want To uh, defame the The dispatcher Mm-hmm. Uh, he ended up telling me, hey, I'm going to leave for a few hours, bro. I'm going to go handle some business. I'm like, mm-hmm. all right. <laughs> mm-hmm. By that, I mean, you know. You know what I mean, bro. Yeah, bro. He went to go handle business. Nah, so I don't I'm know. like, all right, cool. Don't worry about it. It was like, I think like 9 or 10 o'clock at night. Mm. Don't worry about it, bro. And you I'll take care of shit. Yeah, yeah. I covered him. And then one time they asked me about it. Hey, did you leave early? I was like, I don't know, bro. He was like, How do you not know? He sits behind you. I was like, oh, well, he went, he said he went to break, but I never, like, noticed when he came back. I'm sorry about that, you know? Mm. He's like, hmm, okay. Mm. But that was probably, like, a crazy story, you know, like, uh, the yeah. dispatcher told me, like, yeah, I'm going to go handle business, you know? Mm. Well, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> all right, cool. I don't care, but all right, cool. <laughs> Have you ever left early to go handle business? No. Nah. <laughs> no. Nah. My bills and my rent comes first, please. Yeah. I don't have the rent money. I don't have the bill money. Then I don't. I don't have a stay light, power, water. I don't have a roof over my head. So no. <laughs> Any dispatch tricks you know that carriers or truckers can use out there to make it easier on work? Uh, the pure trucker, yeah. and on top of that, uh, port cameras. Okay. Dispatchers use your port cameras. Um, APM has a website where like like it tells you the turn time and it has their cameras. Use your cameras. Communicate with your drivers. That's the best thing that I can say. That's all. and um, um, the driver is the Jesus. Zeus. He's 
he actually asked me, you know, uh, like at times, hey, how does this is such a just terminal look? And I look at my cameras. I was, I was scared, bro. It looks like this. If it's empty, I tell him, go, 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 bro. It's empty. Go, bro. Yeah. His, or like he'll ask me, hey, it's the, where's the lonchetas at today? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, where's the but, party at? <laughs> what, um, you think that's part of a, of a dispatcher's duty now? Yes. Look nowadays at the to look out before look the they go? Yeah. yeah. That's part of the duty. Look. I feel like some feel bothered when you ask them that, like, they would they'll just say they checked it, but they didn't check shit because you yeah. find out when you get there. Yeah, like I like I tell my drivers, like, hey, look, let me look at the cameras. Let me see what's up. Let's say, like, if it's, like, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, driver's coming, let's say, from the City of Commerce, let's say. And he's going back to, let's say, TTI. The line's congested. It's saying that it's taking, like, let's say, three hours to get in. Let's say that the driver gets there, like, by 145, let's say. It's the three hours to get in. You're not going to get in in time for the shift change. So I tell him, you know what? Let me look for something else. Maybe we have something at 8 p.m. And if I see that the 8 p.m. is clear, nobody's in there, it's dead, you know, then I say, hey, you know what? Take your empty to 8 p.m. instead. You know, that's if they're taking it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? But it's like, you got you to gotta look out for the drivers, man, because their productivity counts on them. Your productivity is you, you're giving them orders, pretty much. You're giving mm-hmm. them the, the loads. That's your productivity. Now it's their job to complete it, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's what I do. I check the cameras, you know, check the turn times. Cameras, mm-hmm. cameras, cameras, cameras. I, I would always check them. So, mm-hmm. but they're deceiving sometimes. It's empty to get in. Inside, it's fucking hell. But yeah, it's yeah, better than nothing. Yeah, that's one thing that you know? I do say. Like, hey, you know what? It is empty to get in, but I'm not sure how it is inside, bro. You know what I mean? But you know, you might get lucky. <laughs> just, just good luck. What do you think people will misunderstand about you the most? Um, it doesn't have to be like work related, just as as memo or chore. Maybe the um, that I'm passive, maybe like that, like, like like no me enojo, like I don't, you know, or like like I like I won't defend myself. A lot of people like when they saw me growing up that I was wearing glasses, they thought that era nerdo or something, mm-hmm. or that that I was weak. Mm. That's why I start hitting the gym, bro. Mm. <laughs> so you yeah, know what I mean? It's like, yeah, because you don't want to go up the, next to a guy that's like freaking, you know, muscular and buff wearing glasses. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You know, so I don't know. But or uh, or like like I don't have problems or something. You know what I mean? Like not like everybody has problems. You know yeah, I mean? like everybody goes through stuff. You know, I feel like people maybe underestimate. I think it's probably because of the way that I carry myself. You know, sometimes. Like, I know it's the stuff's bothering me, but, like, I don't show it. Mm. Or, like, I don't show it's the emotions. But I, I feel like that's what they, they um, you know, misunderstand from me. You okay, know what I mean? Okay. Or, or, like, when I come home and I just shower, now I want to just, just go to bed. Sometimes, like, my like my family's like, oh, like, like he doesn't want to talk to us or something. Mm. You know? It's like, no, it's just that uh, I've been sitting now for 10 plus hours dealing with it's the humans. Driver, yeah. <laughs> dealing with other humans. Trying, you know, it's being in meetings or something. Yeah. You know, training new drivers. It's like, I just want to go home, shower, eat, and, you know, go to sleep, you know, and, you know, but yeah, that's probably, you know, one of the things. One last, got two more things. Mm. So we're almost there. So um, do you feel dispatchers have enough knowledge at times that they basically run the operations? No. You, as a dispatcher, you're always learning. You're okay. always learning, okay. man. Like, um, like the whole thing about the free flow situation that I was telling you about. Mm. I never worked free flow before. Like when I switched over to this, com- well, to, to the previous company that I'm at, um, that I was at now, you know what I mean? So it's like the previous company, they did free flow and I didn't understand how it went. Mm. And I didn't even understand either that when they do free flow, they're going to deliver it to a specific yard and they're going to grab an empty to do another free flow. You know what I mean? I never did that. So when I learned, okay, now I understand it. You know what I mean? Or like, um... Or, uh, like, again, the whole camera situation. I didn't have cameras until someone taught me how to get cameras. So, in this business, you learn a lot. You know what I mean? You learn a lot. And, um, yeah, never think that you're you're the higher up or, like, oh, yeah, because I run the show. No, you don't run the show. You're just there to dispatch the loads. You're there to do what you're told. And you're there to, you know, complete the mission just like every, you know, just like every other dispatcher and just like every driver. You're there to take complete the mission. You're there to make money, and you're there to go home after that. You know what I mean? Well, let me touch it up a bit. Mm-hmm. 
you feel you could run a company if you started your own with your skills so far? I feel like I can, yeah. Yeah. Hey, all right. I feel like I can. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. And then, uh, you know, one day, if that ever does happen, man, like, you know, I'll let you know, you know what I mean? Like, hey, you know what? It's, it's, it's starting, it's, you know? New journey. Let's you know talk I mean? about it. Yeah, and just, uh, again, with the whole AB5 situation, it is 10 times harder now. Yeah. 10 times harder. Well, that... Well, that quote goes up 10 times, too. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, Jesus, you know? But I feel like I got it, yeah. If you could go back in time, what would you tell 18-year-old Guillermo? Don't play Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> listen, listen, and, and just be patient. You know what I mean? Shut up and listen for once. You know what I mean? All right. We're at the end of this session, y'all. Yes, hey, sir. Anything you want to add? Uh, yeah, man. Uh, dispatchers again, patience, have thick skin, don't take nothing personal, always learn, be humble. Drivers, love your dispatchers, take care of your dispatchers, dispatchers take care of you, dispatchers take care of your drivers, your drivers take care of you. And you know, trust me, and I believe in that. Okay, yeah. all right, man. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace later.